Hey, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to our channel. So today I'm going to discuss about uh, automating the REST API by using the Test Sigma tool, which is for the low code automation or no code automation tool. Right. So we already know uh, Test Sigma has. Uh, I mean, uh, you can use for the web automation and mobile. Right. So we have community edition as well as we have paid version of uh, Test Sigma also. So you can use any one of that, uh, but when you want to try for the REST API automation, I mean REST API testing by using the Test Sigma, you have to use the cloud service. I mean the cloud uh, version of the Test Sigma or cloud licensed or not of uh, the Test Sigma tool. So this is right now it is not available in the community version of Test Sigma. So still in the community you can go for the web automation and everything. Okay. So this this feature or this uh, option. Uh, the test sigma has introduced very recently uh, i think a week, week ago or last week so you can automate your rest api by using the test sigma tool by i mean not only automate uh, like you can do the validation and assess and parse everything okay so you can validate your response status code everything etc etc okay so this is a page that if you go to this uh, test sigma automated test api page this is what they have written so test sigma helps the engineering Team scale API testing in the automation, and you can see the features uh, chaining the API requests, and a lot of things are available. Okay, and they have some given some sample video also how we can can automate and how you can design and everything. Okay, so that is what I'm I have experienced today, and I want to share to the my YouTube channel as well. Okay, so this is what we are going to see. Uh, if you are new to Test Sigma, so Test Sigma will look like this. So you have to use start using your test sigma cloud so when you use the cloud no make sure you have some limitations okay so limited users only 200 automated testing or minutes per month and 100 desktop browser wise combination so, so these are the offers that they are providing for the free version of cloud okay and they have paid one also for the pro and they have for the enterprise also okay and they have dedicated community support also so you can you can chat with them like a uh, and you can Price or a bug or feature request in their GitHub repository as well. Okay, so these are the features of a free version and pro and enterprise for the cloud. Okay, so first thing you have to sign up. I mean, uh, you have to use this, uh, you have to click on this uh, try test sigma cloud. So it will navigate here. So what you can do now, you can sign up with your work email or you can, you can go with the Google account also. Anything is fine. Okay, so make sure you are not crossing the limits. Limit in the sense that the minutes. That offered by the test sigma team. Okay. So after that, what you will know, you once you log in. So this is my profile. So here you can see this is my profile. I have logged in. So you can see here there are a lot of uh, sample projects they have created. Okay. So after right after this, just go to this test read page. So here you can go to the test development here. So here you can see, I mean, uh, there are a lot of projects which is sample project they have created. So when you click on here, you can see these are the projects that is by default it will come. Okay. So if you want to create the project also, you can create. So they have something like a REST API here as well, right? So when you go here, so you might see some, okay, the, the test cases are not available. I think I have created this REST API. Yeah, I have created this one. So here you can see, right? So when I create this, this is, I have named as a version one. Yeah, this one is created by me. Okay, so whatever you see, the rest of the things. So this is not just created by the uh, test sigma team, I believe, okay? So REST API, because we are going to see about the REST API. So REST API, uh, this feature is uh, something that came recently. So whatever the, the things that you do in the normal other tools, right? So the tools that you are being used for the API testing, the same things are available here as well. So let me walk you through, okay? So first thing, just go to the test feed, go to the test development, and make sure you are you are creating the workspace for you. Workspace is nothing, the project, okay? Otherwise, I mean, you can you can use any one of the sample projects also. That is fine. Okay, I have created one project for myself. So after this, you can see this uh, test cases. Okay, so when you come to the test case, just click on the create button over on the right side corner here, and you have to name this. Okay, so I'm going to name this as uh, uh, get method. Okay, and when you click on the so advanced option, you can see the other things as well, like who's now playing a reviewer, what kind of test it is. So this is not kind of like information to the particular test cases. That's it. So you just click on the right test manually button. So after this, the test case page will be, you can see here, the test case is created successfully. So when you click on here, so you will be seeing like something like a navigate the right test value, right? 
So what you have to know, you have to click on this icon. So here you can see something like a RESTful API. Okay. So make sure you are clicking on this. So now you can start writing your API details. So for example, here you can see the methods, get, post, put, patch, delete methods are available. Okay. So let me go with one first, uh, get method. So let me take some sample APIs. So I'm going with this REQ or ES, which is default one every three days, right? So that is what I'm going to do. Uh, I have taken this. So when I click on the send button here, so now the response is coming here. You can see the response is coming, the format of JSON, HTML, XML. As per your requirement, you can view the, uh, the response, okay? And they have a given the feature also, copy response and save response and save as an object and download file also, okay? So here, uh, we have all these five methods, get, post, put, patch. Okay, what else we have? We have parameters, right? So parameter is nothing like we have a query parameter and path parameter. So you can set the query parameter like this. So for example, here you can see the page equal to two, right? So which is being coming from the query parameter. Okay, so page, the value is two. The moment when I update the here, you can see it is getting appended to our URL. That is the behavior of the query parameter, right? So similarly, you can update the path parameter also. And when you come to the body, this body has and then one second. It has a none and form data also, and it has a URL input at file and binary where you can upload your some files like a PDF or image file. And raw is the one where we can select the JSON or XML or text. Okay. So we'll see about this body when we use for the post method. And we have a headers. If you want to add any headers, you can add that. And we have authorization types also. So here you can see no auth, basic auth, the red token, API, all the authorization types are also available. Okay. So this is a settings tab, like to validate the SSL uh, certificate verification and automatic redirects and everything. Okay. So when you send this, so we can see the response, right? So this is what the API request have it has. So now if you move on to the verification, right? So in the verification, what we can do, we can add the verifications. Okay. For example, I have to see that the page value is coming as a two, right? And the total page number is coming as a 12. I, I, I want to check the last name is coming as uh, Lawson. The first name is coming as a Michael, right? So those kind of verification also we can add it here. So how do we add? So as soon as you, you get the response, just go to this outline tab over here, okay? So now, for example, here you can see something like called add verification, right? So when you click on this add verification, Okay, so it will it will default, it will get automatically added here, you can see. So this is being created just now. Okay, I'm deleting it again, and I'm going back here. I just want to check the page number is coming as a two. So when I click on here, you can see this is being added automatically, right? So the JSON path also. So when you just mouse over here, you can copy the path also from here also. Yeah, here you can see the path is also coming. So for example, if you want to read this URL value, when you click on this, this is a path. Right. So you have this button to add verification that you can add it clearly. Okay. Now I want to see this uh, text is coming as, as expected or not. So when I click on add verification, it will automatically get updated over here. You can see the support text equals this one. Okay. So this is what the verification. So after this, so we have something called the stored variable. So now if you want to store some variables that you want to use in the subsequent request or the next request, right? So what you can do, no? for example, here I want to uh, get this first name, store variables, correct? So when you click on the store variables, you can see the variable is being generated automatically. It is stored. Okay, here you can see the response body. You can change the variable name also. But to read the JSON path, this is a path for the JSON. Okay, it will store the variables here. Okay, so now uh, if you come here uh, in the JSON format, so verify response body, right? So I want to check my entire complete response body, right? So when I click on here, you can see here everything is raw and you can apply the verification type like a strict, uh, strict order, linear, uh, non-extensible and schema, right? So when I click on the stick and when I click on create and here you can see the things. So this is a response body with which we have added for the verification, right? This is a response body. Okay, we were added one, one verification to check the page number is coming as a two, right? After that, we have added one more support text is coming like this. So after that, we have clicked on the verify response body, right? So the entire response body is being added for the verification. You can see, 
So this is what we have selected here, like a strict, right? So when you click on this verify response body, here you can see, this is what we have added. So what it will verify, whatever the response is coming, it, is, it has to match with the response that we have added here. Okay, so totally we have added three assertions, I mean, basically three verifications here. So one is for the value, is coming as a two for the page number and support text and the whole, the entire response body. Okay, similarly, you can add the verification for the headers and the status also. So if you want to add for the status, so just go to the status over here. So here also you can see, so this is a response body and this is a header values that comes and this is for the status code. So for example, I want to check uh, my content type is coming as a application slash JSON author. So when I click on here, you can see in the headers, it gets added, right? I want to modify them. Okay, I just want to go for a confines. I don't want to check for this character set. Okay, I just delete it. I'm just adding it. So now here, I'm just deleting this. I just want to check it is coming as an application slash JSON. So in that case, I can go for the confines. Okay, so just save this. That's it. So similarly, I want to go for a status, right? So the status also, in, in above, right? So this is called request area verification. This is our response. So response is coming as a 200. I want to see verification for the 200. Okay, so the moment when you click on here, you can see the response status code equal to 200. Similarly, you can add the very, I mean, the response time also. So here it is coming as a 25 milliseconds. But if you want to make sure, like, I mean, if you want to increase, right? So you can increase here also. For example, I'm giving that 300 milliseconds. Okay, so here also you can see less than greater than option also. So let me go for a list. Okay, so after that, you can save the test case. Okay, you have to give the title. So this is to get method. Okay, now we can see the test case is saved. So when you click on the pencil button to edit the things, so this is what our endpoint, get method. And in the verification, we have added a couple of verification and we have added the couple of, I mean, one header verification and we have added two status related verification also, okay? This is done. Okay, so now I can go for a execution. So when I click on the run button, so it will ask you the default thing like this. So if you have environments, then you can use this. Otherwise we can go for run now. Okay, the test is executed and you can see it is coming as a pass. Right. So the right side, you can see the results also, it is coming as a pass. So when you click on this view detailed verification results, and here you can see the verifications are everything is passed, passed, and this one also passed. And when you go for this one, this one also passed, and here also passed, right? So this is how we write the get method and we write a couple of assertion also to validate our API is working fine, okay? So similarly, you can go for a put method and patch method, post everything. So let me create one more post method. So post method also the URL going to be a same. Deleting the users. So in the request body. Uh, we are going to send it as a JSON file, I mean, JSON format. Okay. So when I send this, you can see my name is coming. I'm sending only one name. So this ID ID created by this is coming from the default from the server. So similarly here also you can go to the verification and you can add. So if you want to add the verification, make sure you are going to outline tab here and just click on this add verification. So that will add the verification here. Okay. So this one also, it's going to be a same thing. Uh, let me give this as a post. Okay. So after this, okay, we will see about the authorization also. So let me create one more method. So make sure when you click on this button, so you will get this RESTful ABA option. Without this, you cannot click. Okay. So I'm going to have, let me use some authorization here, which is uh, API. 
which needs some authorization method. Okay, so here we have two parameters. One is Q, which is city name, and count is two. So here we are going to use the authorization called API key. Okay, in the API key also, you can see here, uh, it has to be a part of query parameter or request body. So for this one, it is part of being query parameters. And I have something like a key, app ID. And the value of API key is this one. And here also you can use the variables if you have environment created. So now if I send this, so I have to get the details. Okay, it is not working. It's coming as 404. Okay, here is the problem. 2.5 is the version. Okay, so when I send, I'm getting the response detail. You can see it is coming as a 200 and the response body, everything. So here I want to validate. Uh, here I'm looking for the, the weather report or forecast for the particular city called Chennai, right? So I want to validate the verification. The response body is coming as a Chennai offer. Okay, so for intentionally, I'm going to make the mistake. So I'm giving as Chennai and Chennai. So this is how I have modified this because I want to see this it is giving the failure or not. Okay. And status code also, if you want to add, you can add like a 200 status code is coming up. Okay. I'm just click on the create button to create that. Okay. So here authorization. Okay, done. So right now we have one test suite which has almost like a three test cases. One is for get and one is for I mean, I have created only one test case, which has three steps. One is get method, and one is post method, and one is another for authorization. So I'm just going to run. Okay, it is running. You can see the first two one, it has a green color. The last one has uh, something like a red color. Let's see it here. Yeah, you can see here, it is failed, okay? So when you click on the detail verification results on this button, so the test case will open like this. Okay, and you can see this one is failed. Okay, because we have intentionally given this value. This is what they expected, but the actual value we have received as a channel. Okay, so this is how we have to check. Okay, all the steps that got executed here, one, two, three, which is one get method, post method, authorization. Okay, so, yeah, you can create the API request and you can you can use the parameters and you can use the body data, head test, authorization type and verification for the assertions and the stored, vari stored variable, right? Everything you can use here. Okay, you can reorder the test cases also if you want. And this is more like a chaining, right? So if you have some variable you want to share among across all the subsequent requests, that is also possible when you create some environment and if you have stored the variables there, you can use them. Okay. So this is all about uh, REST API automation or REST API testing by using the Test Sigma tool, which is available currently now only on the cloud services. I mean, the cloud version. It is not available on the community version. So you can create the test suites also. In the test suites, you can manage your test cases. Okay. So right now, I have directly created the test cases. One test cases, which has three steps. One step is get method, and another step is post method, and another step is a Authorization again get method. So we have written the details of how to do the verifications for the against the response body that we received or response status that we received. Okay. So that's all about video. I mean, there are more features that to come, I, I believe. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for the uh for the further feature and further uh, release on the test sigma API testing. Okay. That's all about this video. Uh thank you guys.